Please remember that the complete information for the class that you are about to view is at elithecomputerguy.com. Not only do we have our videos there, but we have part lists, diagrams, pictures, and even complete code examples. So if you are watching this video and you want more information, please go to elithecomputerguy.com. Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and in today's class, we are going to be creating a motion detection camera with our little ArduCam. So we have a PIR sensor here, and basically what's gonna happen is whenever the PIR sensor detects motion, the ArduCam will then take a picture, save that picture to the SD card, and also add an entry to a log file. Now to make this happen, you're going to need a basic PIR sensor, you're going to need your ArduCam, you're going to need an Arduino Uno board, and you're going to need your data logging shield. So this is the same hit leg Lego data logging shield that we used previously. The important thing with this particular data logging shield is it has the real time clock built in. So if you have a data logging shield that does not have a real time clock, you will also need a real time clock module. We use the real time clock module in order to create a unique name for all of our image files. This is important, even if you do not care about the timestamp itself. So there may be a reason that you just don't particularly care about the timestamp. You just want the pictures taken again you don't care when the time is or whatever but the important thing is is we're going to use that real-time clock to create unique file names for our images if we do not use something like a real-time clock in order to create the unique file names you're going to run into an issue where the ardu cam will overwrite images that it's already uh taken pictures that it's already created whenever you reboot your Arduino. So we are going to need that real time clock uh, one way or another. But basically, this is what the project looks like. Think of this as those hunting cameras. So if you uh, you go to a hunting or a sporting goods store, you'll see a very popular product is these cameras that hunters put out in the woods. And essentially uh, what happens is you put these cameras out in the woods and anytime there is a motion, it'll take a picture. This is used for things like figuring out where deer or other type of, of prey are. Uh, so think about this. This may be ugly, but essentially think about this as the innards of one of those uh, particular devices. So this is, a uh, this is a pretty cool thing. Again, one of the things I like about this particular project is we're getting to the point where I can show you how to build things. And uh, basically, these are projects that you can really use in the real world. Uh, so with this, you do not need any additional outside computing resources. This does not have to be connected to a computer or anything else. This on its own is a self-contained uh, device. So you can connect it to a battery uh, supply, you can t connect it to some other type of power supply, and you can basically put this wherever you want. It does not have to be connected to a computer, and then you can just simply pop out the SD card, shove the SD card into your computer, and be able to look at the images and the log file. So I think this is a pretty cool project and an interesting thing that you can really do with the ArduCam. So there's no real warning warnings for today. If you've been following along with previous classes and have come up to this point, really the only thing that could massively screw you up is the whole issue with the data logging modules or data logging shields. So again, you're going to want to use a standard compliant shield uh, for this particular project. Uh, I ran into the issue before where I was using a different SD uh, data logging module and because it does not play well with I2C or the SPI, for communication, basically everything failed out, I would get FIFO length errors. So if you get a FIFO length error, that most likely means the the, the shield, the, the data logging shield or the data logging module that you're using is not compliant. So you'll need to go out and buy a compliant one. Again, I purchased this one uh, from Amazon, hit Lego. I think it costs about six or $7. As I say, this is how I like to troubleshoot. It's called the, the credit card troubleshooting process. Run the credit card through, solve the problem. That's how I like to do it. So that is one thing to be just thinking about with this particular project that you shouldn't run into any real issues unless you have an issue with the data logging shield or module. Again, when you purchase uh, the, the data logging shield, if you buy a shield, make sure it is a modern one where the SCL and the SDA pins go all the way through. So the older style uh, data logging shields do not have those pins that go all the way through. Again, that's a place where you might run into some issues. Beyond that, we're using a PIR sensor 
sensor, PIR sensors are dirt simple. You should have learned that back in the beginning. Uh, we are using the real-time clock. We're using the Rinky Dink uh, library uh, for using the real-time clock. I've done many classes about that before. Uh, we're saving to the SD card. We've done many classes about that before. And again, we're dealing with the RDU cam. Uh, the only thing, just to keep in mind, if you do have to buy a new uh, shield for this particular project, is do remember to buy the batteries when you buy the shield. Uh, for whatever reason, the CR1220 batteries that this particular shield requires, uh, you cannot buy them at CVS or Walgreens or Giant or Wegmans or any place where you would think you would be able to buy tiny little batteries. Um, these, these types of batteries, for whatever reason, I went out, I couldn't find them at many locations, so I ended up having to buy them off of Amazon after I had already received the card. Uh, so that's the only thing that might you run, might run you into a quirk. So just make sure your, uh, your SD logging uh, shield is up to snuff. You've got the real-time clock battery, and everything else is, is a bit paint by numbers, really. So now that you have an idea of what's going on, let's go over to the workbench. I'll just make sure you understand how this is put together. Then I will give you a demonstration of how this works and basically show you what the results are from the SD card, and then we'll dive into the code. So here's how the project gets built. Uh, again, I have an Arduino Uno uh, board that this is all built off of. Then I have this Hit Lego uh, data logging shield on top. Again, the important thing here is this SCL and SDA. Do make sure for your data logging shields that the pins go all the way through and you can connect to them on the top for your RDU cam. Again, some of the older shields do not allow you to do that. Uh, again, we have the, the, uh, the battery in here for the real-time clock. Uh, basically Basically with the RDU cam, the CS pin, so the CS pin is the pin used for actually recording the images. That's connected to digital pin 7 here, so that's a standard like we've been doing in the other projects. Uh, beyond that, we then have our PIR sensor, so this is simply our passive infrared sensor. This is a standard uh, motion detection sensor. This is basically an on-off sensor, so it's a digital sensor, it's on or off. So we have it connected to the 5 volt and the ground. For this, since we have two devices that need 5 volt, I have the 5 volt running to this, this micro breadboard here. One connection for the 5 volt goes to the Arduino cam, the other connection for, to the 5 volt goes to the PIR sensor, and that's how that gets powered. We then have the signal wire here. For the signal wire, I have simply have this connected to digital pin 2 um, on the shield that's connected to the Arduino, and this is all that's required for the setup. The only thing beyond this is you do have to remember to put uh, to find like some kind of tripod or something for your camera, you are going to have to mount your camera in such a way so it actually takes the images like you like. Um, because basically, if you, if you just have the motion sensor like this and you have the camera pointed up, then every time there's a motion, it's gonna take a picture of the ceiling. Uh, so for me, I just grabbed a little tripod. Uh, if you're gonna build this into a project, again, kind of tape it or glue it or whatever to some kind of frame so the camera is actually pointing in the right direction. But this is basically just how it gets built. Again, uh, if you want to make this an autonomous device, not have it plugged into the computer, you can simply plug it into a battery pack or another power supply. Uh, for today, I'm going to be plugging it into the computer so we can take a look at the serial model Monitor so you understand what's going on, but this is a completely autonomous device if you simply, again, you actually built it into some kind of some kind of structure, gave it a power supply, you could put this wherever you want it, have it take pictures, and just grab the SD card to see what the pictures say. So this is what the project looks like. Okay, so what I've done here is I've simply kind of jury-rigged a little setup. So my RDU cam is pointed at me, and my little motion detector PIR motion sensor down here is also pointed at me. Uh, again, something that you need to be thinking about when you create these projects is if you write all the code, if you connect everything, but your PIR sensor is pointed in the wrong direction, you can be sitting here waving, trying to get it to detect motion, but if it's pointed in the wrong direction, then no amount of code modification is going to make your little project work. So do remember, to something to be thinking about from a troubleshooting standpoint, is make sure all your sensors are pointed in the right direction, make sure your camera is pointed in the right direction, uh, so on and so forth. So I just use my little tripod here, and for the PIR sensor, I will just uh, put it on the ground. So basically here, we have our nice little SD card. We actually have a micro SD card that's put into a little SD card adapter. And so what we can do is we can slot this into um, our little project here and then once we have done that um, I can power the project up so what we're going to do is I'm simply going to uh, plug in the project now so it's now connected uh, to the computer and we can also read the serial monitor 
We're gonna go to the serial monitor. Let me turn off auto scroll for a second. So I turned off auto scroll and basically what's going to happen is so RDU cam start, SPI interface is okay. So it detects that the module is there and then the SD card is detected. So this is telling you that everything is there, everything is properly detected. Then what I have here is whenever it does not detect motion, it says no motion detected. This part of the code you may want to rip out when you put it into a real production environment. I am simply putting it here as a visualization mechanism so you know when no motion is detected and then when motion is detected, it's a little bit more obvious. That's kind of one of those things, you know, one of the ways that I teach things, uh, whether or not you want to keep it in your code is up to you. Uh, let me click on the auto scroll and go all the way down. So what you can see here is no motion was detected. Then when motion is detected, basically you see, you know, start capture, cam capture done. It gives you the FIFO length. It gives you the file name. So this is the file name it'll be saved under. And then it goes back to saying no motion detection. Okay, so there was again, it detected motion again, gives you some uh, information, saves the, uh, saves the image. Again, it gets on motion there, so on and so forth. So basically right at this point, all, what will happen is any time that it detects motion, it will take a picture. When it's not detecting motion, it won't. So again, there we go, I moved, and now it's taking a picture. So that's that's basically how this thing works. It's all save, it's saving the image files to the SD card, and it's also creating a log file on the SD card. So with that, let me pull the SD card out, and we will go over to my little demonstration machine so I can show you what's on the SD card now. So here we go. Uh, this is just simply, you know, my MacBook Pro that I normally use. I'm going to slot the SD card into the side. We're going to come down here to Finder. We're going to see that the untitled shows up. And this is what we've got. So this is the these are the pictures uh, that were taken. So if I click on this picture, you can see that. <laughs> Again, do, do remember when you create a camera, make sure that uh, it's pointed at whatever the hell it is you want to see. You might get a lot of pictures that are completely worthless. Like, oh, wow, look. Okay, everybody, we're, we're going to give the police a picture of that ear. If you see that ear, arrest that person. Again, an important thing to be thinking about. So basically, every time that it detected a uh, emotion, it then took a picture and then it used the Unix timestamp minus the 15 in the beginning. I talked about this in a previous class in order to create uh, the file name. If we go to the log file, this is something that we can use that might be a little bit easier as a, as a normal person for determining when uh, pictures were taken, basically when there was motion. So with this, what it does is it tells you the day of the week that the picture was taken it gives you the date uh, so basically this is the European format so it's day uh, month year so the 28th of May 2020 it gives you the time and then it gives you the image name so again something that you have to be thinking about when you create projects is not that they not only that they functionally work but that there's something that allows the user to be able to easily be able to work with your little project so like with this if I put this into a warehouse or again I put this out into the woods or something what I could do is I could come to this log file I could say, okay, all I really care about is what happened at Thursday at whatever time. So I can say, okay, at Thursday at the time, this is the, the picture that was taken. So I can then go and I can find that particular picture in the folder and I can open it up. I go, oh yeah, I've, I've seen that here before, right? Uh, so that's one of the reasons that I did this little log file here is this is just a way for your users to be able to go in and very easily be able to see in a human readable fashion when particular pictures were taken and it might be easier for them to, to navigate through the, the product. So with that, let's go over and take a look at the code that actually makes all of this work. So here's a sketch that we're dealing with. Uh, basically, I'm building on uh, the previous class that we did, and I'm essentially just modifying the example sketch that RDUCAM gives you, RDUCAM Mini 2MP plus Multi-Capture 2SD. So basically what I've done is I've taken this example and I've gone through and I've modified it. Again, if you're gonna be dealing with RDUCAM, there's a lot that makes RDUCAM actually work. 
And unless you want to be a computer scientist or really be an absolute expert on Arducam, I would highly recommend you take their examples and modify them. Don't try to write this crap from scratch. Uh, you will lose your mind. Uh, so here, basically, we have uh, the standard libraries that are required uh, for this particular project, Wire, Arducam, SBI, and SD. Uh, you are going to, make sure, going to have to make sure that the Arducam library is installed. Uh, then we're going to come down here. This is the configuration file, the memory saver.h. Uh, basically, with the memory saver.h, this is the configuration file that tells the sketch what Arducam you have. Uh, so with this, I have the OV2640 cam here, and uh, up at the top, I have the OV2640 Mini 2MP+. Uh, so this is something that's going to have to be set whenever you're creating an RDU cam sketch. Just verify what camera and what module you're using. Put the, basically uncomment out whatever that is here in the memory saver.h configuration file and then go on. Uh, past that, we're going to go down uh, this up here. That's all standard with the ArduCam. Uh, then we come to the ETCG note. So basically, wherever I've made modifications or edits within this sketch, I've simply put ETCG note and then whatever it is that I've done. So this define frames number 0x00. So initially, for this example sketch, whenever it takes a picture, or basically whenever it's triggered, it took like five or six pictures. And so I don't want five or six pictures taken, to be ob obviously. So with this, what I'm doing is I'm simply setting the frames number to 0x00. Zero, 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 and what this does is it says whenever this the, uh, the, the camera is triggered, literally only take one picture. If you want to modify this to something else to create a different uh, number of, of pictures taken whenever it's triggered, uh, just do a Google search for modifying that. Uh, past that, we're then going to come down here. This is the standard CS pin uh, for your ArduCam. Again, remember, you can actually have multiple ArduCams connected to one Arduino board. Uh, th this is the pin that's important for actually saving the image files. So each ArduCam will require its own CS pin. I'm leaving this as the default to, uh, to pin 7. Then we come down here to another ETCG note. This is for your SD card shield or module. So most SD card shields or modules will use digital pin 7. So even though it's a shield, even though it connects directly to the Arduino board, it's still going to require the use of a digital pin. And so the default for this particular shield is pin 10. So you may have to modify this. Uh, when you use this example initially, I think this is set to uh, pin 9. So you may have to modify it to whatever pin your particular shield uses. Past that, we're going to then scroll down. Uh, then here, this is where we're going to set up our PIR sensor. So the passive infrared sensor. This is the motion detection sensor. Uh, you don't need any libraries or anything for the PIR sensor. It's either on or off type of deal. The first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to define the PIR pin and we're going to set that to digital pin 2. We're then going to create a variable int and that is going to be the PIR reading. So basically the, the sensor is going to send a value to the, the PIR pin. We are going to take the reading and then we're going to test essentially on whether or not it's detecting motion. Past that we're going to come down here. This is where we set up the real-time clock. Again, we're using that rinky dink uh, RTC a library that we've been using for all of our previous classes. Here we're going to include that particular library, so the DS3231 library. We're then going to call DS3231. We are going to create an object. We're going to create a real-time clock, RTC. That is going to be connected to the SDA and the SCL. So you're going to leave all of this if, if the real-time clock is built into your particular shield. Uh, if, if the real-time clock, you're using a real-time clock module, it's connected to other digital pins, you may have to modify that here. Uh, then past that, we're going to come down here. Another note, we're going to create the log file. So we're going to create a file. It's going to call, be called log file. And then we're also going to be creating a string. This is going to be for file name. Maybe just uh, minus that there. So basically, this is the log file. That's that text file uh, that I showed you uh, previously. And then what this is going to be the string for the file name. So when we name uh, the image files, 
that's what we're going to use. Uh, then we're going to come down here into the initial setup. So the first thing that we have to do is for the PIR sensor, we have to make the PIR sensor an input. So basically we're turning the PIR sensor on, that pin on for input. And then for the real-time clock, we're going to have to do the RTC, and then we're actually going to have to begin the real-time clock. This is the kind of stupid stuff that if you leave it out of the code, <laughs> your code's not going to work and it's going to get very confusing. Past that, we're going to look at all this. And again, this is all kinds of stuff you do not want to mess with. Don't mess with this. Unless you've done a lot of Google searching or you know what you're doing, don't mess with this. Um, a lot of stuff here, if you screw one thing up, a lot of things will not work. So we're going to come down here, talk about initializing the SD card, a whole bunch of different stuff. The important thing that we're going to get to now is the loop. So this is the actual loop that the Arduino is going to loop through continuously until you pull the power. So the first thing that we're going to have here is the ETCG note. This is going to detect the PIR sensor. Uh, so PIR reading equals digital read of the PIR pin, right? So basically, it's get, since the PIR pin has been set to input, it's going to digital read the value coming in. If the PIR reading equals high, so equal equals high, so basically it's getting a reading. We're going to serial.print line motion detected. So this is going to be on the serial monitor, right? It's going to say motion detected. Then we're going to come down here. This is where we create the file name uh, for, for our image. So basically we're going to create a long timestamp. That long timestamp is going to be the Unix uh, timestamp from that real time clock. So to get the Unix timestamp, use RTC dot Unix time, and then you feel, feed, uh, feed it the RTC get time that gives you a Unix timestamp. Then for the timestamp, timestamp is going to equal timestamp minus whatever the hell this is 50 It's 150 million. I think it's 150 million. Basically, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to eliminate that beginning 15. So you may find a less clunky way of doing this. The important thing to understand when you're saving to an SD card in the Arduino world is it uses the 8.3 naming convention. What that means is you can have eight characters, a period, and then three characters after that for, for your file association. So you can have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, period, uh, txt or one two three four five six seven eight period uh, jpg right if it is longer than eight point three then you're going to run into issues the the file will actually save but it, it will automatically modify the file name and you'll get a file name you don't want so essentially uh, if we get a unix timestamp a unix timestamp is 10 characters long so what i'm doing here is i'm simply removing this is a clunky way of simply removing the first two characters we're simply minusing out that 150 million then we're going to create the file name so the file name is we're going to turn the timestamp into a string so we use a string function to turn the timestamp into a string and then we're going to add concatenate on dot jpg in the end so basically what we're going to have is the timestamp uh, of the the eight characters plus dot jpg that'll be the file name then we're going to come down here so log file equals sd open and then we're going to do log dot txt so that's going to be the log file and then we're going to say file write if log file so basically if this works what we're going to do is we're going to log file dot print the day of the week comma the date comma the time comma and then the file name so this is how everything gets printed out into that that text log file and then we are going to log file close uh, again from a troubleshooting standpoint do make sure you do not forget this little bit of line of code i actually fat fingered it and forgot to put the close in there if you do not close the file once you've written to it then you don't actually write to it it's, it's not permanent until you close the file so do make sure you actually close that log file Else, so if for some reason you get an error print, uh, trying to write to that particular log file, you will get error writing to the log file. And so basically this is the initial part. So basically it's gonna be reading from the PIR pin. If the PIR pin is high, it will serial print out that motion is detected. It will then print to the log file, day of the week, the date, the time, and the file name. Then what we're gonna have is all the way down here, is where we will actually print, save the file with that file name. So this is the area that we modified before. And again, we have this ETCG note. So this is the ETCG note. This is where we actually create the file. So the out file, so this is the image file. This is the JPEG that we're creating. This is SD open 
file name, write, or create, or truncate. So basically, this is where things get overwritten if there's not a unique name. And basically, this is where the image file is actually saved with that file name. Uh, the only other thing other than that is again when motion is not detected. So again here, this is what get, this is what happens when motion is detected. Else, if there is no motion, right? No motion has been detected. This is where we simply print out no motion detected on the serial monitor. This is the type of thing that I would probably remove in a real world, like a production type product. Because then again, if you're putting this out in the real world, it's not going to be connected to a serial monitor all the time. Then you don't necessarily want it trying to print out to a serial monitor. But basically, this is how the code works. It may seem a little bit complicated. The important thing to do is simply go through, take a look at wherever I have these ETCG notes, uh, look at what the ETCG note is, make sure you understand why I'm doing whatever I'm doing here, uh, and go from there. Again, with all of this Arduino code, it seems very simple when you initially open it up, but once you get a little bit more comfortable with it, you realize, again, met, play, play with the things that you want to play with, and then don't modify anything else, and you'll be fine. So there you go. Now you basically understand how to make your own nanny cam. So you have your two me megapixel Ardu cam here. You have your PIR sensor. You have your SD card uh, reader here. You have your real time clock. And basically, you put all this together and you have a nanny cam or a hunter's cam or whatever else. You have your own little spy camera. One of the things that I like about showing you just the electronic components, even though this is a little bit ugly and a little bit uh, uh, basically awkward to use. One of the nice things about this is this shows you this is all that's required to make this project functional. One of the big issues with new people that get into technology is they see the final form factor of an electronic device and then they think that basically any device like that has to look like this, right? Like a camera has to look like a camera. The device has to look like however they've seen the device in the past. Remember, all that has to happen from a technical standpoint is as long as all these wires are connected and as long as the electrons get from point A to point B properly, it doesn't matter how the rest of the form factor of this project is designed, right? You can you can shove you can shove the camera somewhere, you can shove the body somewhere else, you can shove the PIR sensor, you could even run a longer cable. So again, you could put the camera at a different location from where the Arduino itself is. You could shove this into a stuffed animal. You could put this into a clock. You could put this into a book. You could put this uh, if you're an Uber driver. Maybe you could put this in the back seat of your Uber. Uber car, something like that. The important, the, the cool part about just seeing the electronics here is it shows you what's required to make this project work technically, and then and then you can build uh, basically a form around it. You can build this into something else that is more useful for your particular circumstance. If you want to use this for as a hunting camera to see where the deer are, right? You would put this into a weatherproof housing. You would make sure it has a really big battery that goes along with it. Maybe you have some kind of cool cooling mechanism or whatever else. Again, if you want to create a nanny cam, you hollow out, you basically you hollow out a, uh, a teddy bear, you shove this into the teddy bear, as long as the camera is pointed out at the right direction, then that will work. If you want to put this in your car, again, the same type of thing, think about the, the automobile environment, think about where you want to put it, how you want to protect it, and then you design the outside, the exterior, based off of that particular situation. The electronics inside don't care. This doesn't care whether it's a hunting camera or a nanny camera or it's sitting in an Uber right it's just it's just gonna gonna do whatever you've, you've put the code in there to do and as long as all the wiring is connected so anyways there you go this is your own little uh, nanny cam spy camera again something to be thinking about is to modify this project is remember you can add multiple other sensors uh, to this project you can you can then also save other values to the log file so if you wanted a temperature sensor on here for some reason if you want to see, uh, basically, again, let's say, let's say for animals, for hunting, uh, you want to know what temperature it is when the animals are most active. So not only do you want to know what time uh, you saw animals in a particular area, but you want to know what temperature. So maybe, maybe at dusk, maybe at six o'clock at night, when the temperature is 70 degrees, then you're more likely to see, see deer. 
So you know, if it's 85 degrees and 6 o'clock at night, hey, you'll just sit home and crack a beer instead, right? You know, hey, I know that basically I'm only seeing deer when it's 70 degrees at 6 o'clock. It's 85 degrees at 6 o'clock, so I'll stay home. That's one of the things like I really want you to be thinking about with when you're designing this for real-world situations is figuring out what additional information you can pull in from sensors to make this even more valuable uh, to the people people that will be using it. So some interesting things to be thinking about with a little spy cam like this. As always, I enjoy doing this class. Look forward to seeing you at the next one. If you like the content that I create, please think about going to elinethecomputerguy.com and becoming a member or donating. Please understand that all the educational videos are in front of the paywall. That includes the videos, that includes the notes, the diagrams, and the code example. All of that is freely available and in front of the paywall. But if you want to watch opinion videos or if you want to be able to comment, you do need to become a member. Membership is $5 a month or $60 a year and gives you access to those opinion videos and the ability uh, to comment. If you don't want to become a member, you just want to give a one-time uh, donation, there is also a donate button where you can do that. Please understand, in order to provide the education that I am, it does cost money. Servers cost money, equipment costs money, travel costs money. All of these things cost a reasonable amount of money. And the fact of the matter is, is YouTube's advertising program no longer supports creators the way that it used to. So if you want to these classes to continue to stick around and you find them to be valuable, please think about either becoming a monthly member or donating a few dollars for this project.